Welcome back. And uh, that's the last section for this lecture. And also the last kind of odd glacier flows that we can odd odd ice flows that we can see on this on this planet. Um, and now I'm going to talk about ice streams, which are basically corridors of fast flowing, fast flowing draining. Uh sorry, corridors of fast flowing ice draining and ice shit. Uh, this is a picture taken in Antarctica showing an ice stream. What we see here is some kind of surface that's really broken down, kind of chaotic, while the right part of the, the our right corner of the picture uh, shows much smoother ice and the transition between the two, there's like some nice crevasses. What it shows is a fast flow in that chaotic part and a slow flow on that smooth part. The, sl the smooth part represents the ice sheet and that's not moving that much. And the chaotic part represents the, uh, the chaotic surface represents the ice stream that is going much faster than uh, the surroundings. So why does it happen? This is another picture of an ice stream. You can really see them from, from uh, far up the sky. That is, an ice stream is pretty big. It can be hundreds of kilometers long, and those are uh, the fastest um, ice cream features on the planet. So why do only specific part of an ice sheet flow very fast while the rest is pretty uh, pretty slow? Um, that is mainly due to uh, the geology that is laying underneath the glacier. Uh, ice streams usually have water and teal uh, at their base that greatly enhances basal sliding and therefore increases the velocity of the ice. So if we look at this figure here on the lower left corner, we have some ice that is overlying teal, and that is the part that goes super fast. If we have just bedrock that is uh, not malleable, not permeable, and not deformable, well, that will not help the ice to move faster. Uh, I don't know if you remember this figure showing the three different type of models uh, for um, <clears throat> basal sliding. So that's basically what we have here. We have ice that is overlying a very deformable teal sediment uh, that is probably filled with water because we have liquid water below the ice sheets. And all of that is just the perfect recipe to create fast flowing uh, ice. Now let's look a bit at uh, the topography below Antarctica. Uh, Antarctica is mostly emerged, but actually if we look at the bedrock below it, it looks a lot like an archipelago, many different islands or kind of um, a Swiss cheese kind of configuration. That's mainly due to the weight of the ice sheet, and we'll, we'll talk about that a bit later in other lectures, but... Uh, that's mainly due to the weight of the ice sheet that is pushing down the rocks below sea level. The thing is that uh, most of the ice in Antarctica is grounded below sea level. And if you remember the tidewater glacier cycle, that's not super good news because if you have water kind of intrude, um, intruding below the ice, then you can create some kind of tidewater type uh, kind of retreat where there is nothing stopping the ice retreat up until it reaches um, grounds that are above sea level. So most of the Antarctic, uh, a lot, a big part of the Antarctic sheet is below sea level and mostly the Western Antarctica. That's that's this part here of Antarctica. So Western the Western Antarctic ice sheet is particularly vulnerable to rapid retreat and collapse because as we saw in the previous slide, uh, most of it sits below sea level. And think of it as a, kind of a, as a giant tidewater glacier instability. You know, when the tidewater glacier is is retreating in its cycle, it's because it sits mainly below sea level. Therefore, you can have warm ocean water intrusion below the ice. So not only are you, not only are you melting the ice from the top and calving it at the front, you're also melting it from below. And that's what this image is showing is that uh, because most of Western Antarctica is grounded below sea level, um, it is very uh, vulnerable to a rapid retreat or collapse uh, that might happen at some point. So small quiz prep again, and I think that's, yeah, uh, not the, quite the last slide. Why do ice streams flow so much faster than the immediately adjacent ice? I'll leave you a few seconds for that.
So the right answer here is uh, answer C. Ice streams occur in areas underlain by wet till, which enhances sliding rates. It's not answer A because um, internal deformation is not the main factor for, for that fast flow. It does have more internal deformation in a sense because it flows much faster than the adjacent ice, but it's not the reason uh, why, why the ice streams are going faster. Ice flow, ice streams flow at the same rate as the adjacent ice. That's not true. They are much faster. Uh, and finally, ice streams have steeper beds. Same thing. Um, not necessarily. Those those places usually have the same kind of slope, and there, and you still have a much faster ice flow at a specific point. So, right answer here is answer C. So yeah, let's let's wrap up this lecture. Um, glacier surges. Um, are divided into two, um, sorry, glacier surges happen kind of two times. We have that quiescent phase where the glacier is not moving that much, pretty slow, and that lasts for a much longer time that the surge in itself, where the glacier um, has velocity increased by more than order of magnitude, and it happens on a pretty short amount of time. Those surges in Alaska are suspected to be related to the um, underlying um, subglacial drainage system and what is associated with the surge is really uh, a collapse of the accumulation area and a thick so a thinning of the accumulation area and a thickening of the ablation area so you have that mass transfer from top glacier to bottom glacier tidewater glaciers um, can have flows that are independent from uh, the, the climate um, configuration um, they flow much faster than, than valley glaciers and they terminate in the oceans in the ocean and you have that tidewater glacier cycle that is uh, that is capable of, of having slow advance and rapid retreats that are many depend depending on the sediment transport and how much of that terminal moraine is protecting the front of the glacier that's maybe a point I did not insist on enough but yeah sediment transport is uh, one of the most important factors in the tidewater glacier cycle meaning that um, if the glacier in the if the glacier cannot sustain its terminal moraine then even with sediment through sediment transport then it will start retreating <laughs> because as the glacier is moving down uh, the fjord it's really eroding all that bedrock or that till that's beneath the ice and all that till is then transported by the meltwater to the front of the glacier where it creates that moraine and finally ice streams are corridors of fast flowing ice in antarctica uh, overlying slippery or wet till which cause very um, very fast basal sliding uh, and those represent a possible mechanism for dramatic ice mass loss in West Antarctica if those ice streams are, are intruded by seawater uh, at the bottom of the of the ice shelf. So that's all for today. I hope the lecture was clear enough and, uh, and you learned that you learned new things. I'll see you for next lecture where we will uh, leave the subglacial or the high hydrological part of, of glaciology and we'll go more into the uh, uh, datation of the ice, datation of the ice and how ice interacts with the environment. Bye.